sewage is coming up the sinks. And all these women, they survived the worst, you know. And we're reading the Declaration of Human Rights out loud until we get to the word inalienable. It's hard to pronounce. And they start laughing. And they think I said it's alien. And maybe I'm talking about outer space. And I say it's hard to spell too. But what does it mean anyhow? One woman asks me. That word, inalienable, it means all these rights we're reading, they're part of every human being. And they ask, what do we have to do to get these rights? They're yours, I tell them. She looks at me amazed. Well, that's the best fucking kept secret in the whole world, all I can say. On the days I give audience, Monday and Friday, my God, you can't enter my office. A line, groups of 20, 40 people are waiting for me. I come from all over the Republic. Mary, please get me director of General Hospital. Mrs. Posada needs medicine for her mother, and I didn't give her any. I have a phone without wire. El director del hospital, Anabella de Leon. How are you? Fine? Okay. Everybody answer my call because I know I'm not playing. Here is Mrs. Posada. You didn't give her medicine for her mother. She is presenting to me the prescription in this moment. I need you to solve the problem, okay? You say you're going to send me the medicine? No. She's going to there now, and you will give her the medicine. And she's going to call me again when she has the medicine, okay? Okay, thank you very much. Because if you don't give her the medicine, I'm going to call you to the plenary. Okay? Bye-bye. Your problem is solved. Please call me when you have the medicine. Okay, next. Please, what can I do for you? In the night, Lee, when I think of home, I think of mountain shadows. As I hide in the border of Afghanistan to walk so many times at night. As the face of the woman, that the world is moving, guide my footsteps through the landmines. I see a woman killing bird all by herself. Because on the Taliban, male doctors are forbidden to treat women, and women cannot be trained as doctors. On the Taliban, male doctors are forbidden to treat women, and women cannot be trained as doctors. I see her face as she died in front of my eyes. And I cannot stay calm. What can I do? The only way to bring basic health care to this woman is to walk. Sometimes at night, the region is so remote. So I smuggle myself and my two small children. Under my burqa, to try to bring health care. The burqa can be a good thing to disguise myself. When I feel the Mujahideen watching me across the mount, I find they are not all against the woman. Sometimes they tell us where the landmines are, or not to go a certain way, there might be thieves. Crisis Center for Women, how may I help you? I heard you on the radio. You did? I heard you on the radio. You were telling my story. Yes. My husband, my husband is beating me. Where are you? 
has beaten me for 26 years. Where are you? I'm in bed with a broken back. Have you been beating me? Tell me your address. I heard your voice. You sounded like someone I could trust. Tell me how to get to you so I can send help. Girl, my husband is very powerful. He's in one of the government agencies. I will come and bring the police. You know, girl, you don't understand. If you call someone, he will find out. Tell me. Before you can get to me, I will be dead. She calls for about a month. Then she stops calling. She is one of the ones I could not save. Smoke are malicious spirits, and the prey long is the soul. All these years, I didn't know that our culture in Cambodia, we're supposed to have 19 souls. Every part of our body has a soul. Hair, feet, the way you're raised, you lose your temper. Someone takes it away. I've been working with trafficked women since I became Minister of Women's Affairs in 1998. Until that time, only men held that position. The first thing I did was challenge an old Cambodian proverb that says, a man is gold, a woman is a white piece of cloth. Think of that. A man is gold, a woman is a white piece of cloth. If you drop a piece of gold somewhere, you can pick it up, you can clean it, and it'll be shinier than before. But if a piece of cloth is stained, it's ruined. If you lost your virginity, you cannot be a white piece of cloth. Each year, more than 30,000 children are forced into prostitution in Cambodia. Girls as young as 11 are tricked promised jobs to help their poor families, then taken away to become sex workers. I'm working now with one of them, a girl called Monique. How did I come to speak out? Well, I was living in the United States, and you know how American society is. I mean, <coughs> very nice people, but often they don't have a clue about any other place, even other parts of America, or even Canada, their nearest neighbor. So what chance are they, what chances that they're going to know anything about Nigeria and care? It was 1995 and I was at Harvard in my second year. I just finished class when I see students petitioning. And I know it's going to be something about something really ridiculous, like the right of students to walk with bare feet on campus on Sundays. And I'm trying to avoid them, but they're very persistent. And they stop me, and only because I'm black. But they say to me, we have a petition. The elected president of Nigeria is in jail and we're getting signatures. And I say to them, don't you know you're getting signatures from my father? And of course they don't know, but they're excited and they say, could I speak to their group on campus about the situation in Nigeria? I thought I'd be speaking to a vacuum that nobody would hear, but they care and they listen. And that's how I began to find my voice. So my father took me away from school at 16 and put me to work as a clerk in his one-man printing business. It was very constricting. I wanted to go to university, and I knew my family wouldn't let me. So I left home. I got a bed sick, and I applied for a lowly civil servant position. And at the interview, I'm asked, what do I think of homosexuals? And, and what would I do if my brother married a black woman? Offensive questions. But they're not the real question. The real question was what do I think about Catholics? I'm from a Union Protestant background. I wouldn't have known a Catholic until I was 18. And I remember a conversation in the office about a Catholic who'd gone proclamation and how you couldn't have that. when I realized the conversation could only take place because there aren't any Catholics in the office. North Arling was a profoundly unjust place to live. It still is. It's a very
very old house for the poor. In the North, if you challenge injustice and you're not on the side of the status quo, then you have to be on the other side. It's a very rigid power system. Here is a chant I made up. 1954 I was born, you see here. I call it darkness. That is followed by sorrow, by shame. Then basic knowledge, when I learn everything. And here, I call it enthusiasm, and here courage, and no blame. That is my school days. I want excellent grades, so it helped me to win a scholarship to study law. Discrimination is that here of my going to law school. My scholarship was to private university. When I go there, my classmates discriminate against me because they have money. I am poor people. They say to me, you must not go, you must go to public university. You are not our circle. I tell them, just because you say to me that I must not go there, no. Forget it. Bye bye. I don't know what it is to be silent. I must all the time defend my rights. You do not have the same as I have between my ears, I tell them. You discriminate against me for being poor or being woman. I am going to discriminate against you for being stupid. <laughs> we go through the calling of the soul ceremony. Now, the woman. She's just been rescued from a brothel. We wrap her wrists with 19 strings, each one, one for each of her soul. The entire time, she says almost. She's only a kid, a beautiful child, that smile and everything, but she's lost. You can see it. Just by looking at her, you know that she's soulless. It's a form of emptiness, depression. When you ask about that moment, that painful moment when she was penetrated, forced, she just keeps saying, I think of my soul as light filled, not that I'm some kind of psychic vision, but I believe there's much more light than darkness. It matters to me that I shouldn't be vindictive or harbor ill will for other people. When you experience brutal events, you can start feeling very hostile and bitter. That's a lot of dark energy I don't want. At my son's school, Peter was seven years old, first grade. We mothers would let the kids go in and then we would stand around and talk about school, other things. I was assigned to the Institute for Socioeconomic Studies of the population at the time. And one morning I am talking to two other women. One is a homemaker, the other a computer programmer. I say to the women that I am doing a survey at the Institute and we have these letters coming in. Women talking about domestic violence and they say, Domestic violence? What do you mean? When I was growing up in the Soviet Union, no one talked of such things. We did not even have words for it. So I explained that it is when husbands are controlling, jealous, when they put you down and won't let you speak to other women or your family, isolating you, and the emotional abuse, the psychological pressure slowly comes to physical abuse and sometimes not so slowly. After I explain to them, both of them, both of them say their husbands are abusing them, one for six years, the other for 10. I feel something sinking inside me. Later, the one who's a homemaker calls me, crying. She tells me that her husband was putting on his suit and a button came off and he picked up his shoe and slammed her in the side of the face in front of their children. Her face is bruised, swollen, for a week. I ask her, why don't you just leave him? She answers, do you know where I would go? So I start calling social services. I call different agencies and I ask, who can help a woman in a situation like this? And everywhere, the answer is, no one. It's a private matter. Well.